Hi, this is Jay. Welcome to Bright Ideas. The interaction of heredity and environment is so extensive that to ask which is more important, nature or nurture, is like asking which is more important to a rectangle, height or width. Here are the issues of human development. Nature versus nurture. When trying to explain development, it is important to consider the relative contribution of both nature and nurture. Developmental psychology seeks to answer two big questions about heredity and the environment. First, how much weight does each contribute? And second, how do nature and nurture interact? Nature refers to the process of biological maturation, inheritance, and maturation. One of the reasons why the development of human beings is so similar is because our common specifies heredity or DNA guides all of us through many of the same developmental stages about the same points in our lives. Nurture refers to the impact of the environment, which involves the process of learning through experiences. Continuity versus discontinuity. Think about how children become adults. Is there a predictable pattern they follow regarding thought and language and social development? Do children go through gradual changes or are they abrupt changes? The continuity view says that change is gradual. Children become more skillful in thinking, talking, or acting much the same way as they get taller. The discontinuity view sees development as more abrupt, a succession of changes that produce different behaviors in different age-specific life periods called stages. Biological changes provide the potential for these changes. Psychologists of the discontinuity view believe that people go through the same stages, in the same order, but not necessarily at the same rate. Stability versus Change Stability implies personality traits present during infancy endure throughout the lifespan. In contrast, change theorists argue that personalities are modified by interactions with family, experiences at school, and acculturation. This capacity for change is called plasticity. For example, Rutter in the year 1981 discovered that babies living in understaffed orphanages often become cheerful and affectionate when placed in socially stimulating adoptive homes. The issues presented can be translated into questions that have sparked animated debate among developmentalists. Are girls less likely to do well in math because of their feminine nature or because of society's masculine bias? How extensively can the elderly be trained to reason more effectively? How much, if at all, does our memory decline in old age? Can techniques be used to prevent or reduce the decline? For children who experienced a world of poverty, neglect by parents, and poor schooling in childhood, can enriched experiences in adolescence remove the deficits that they have encountered earlier in their development?